What's going on Beverly? My name is Colin Rosso. I'm a professional drummer, clinician, educator, and employee right here at the Drum Shop North Shore, which is located in downtown Beverly. You guys are going to be watching Colin TV, where I take you through a clinic that took place here on May 4th, 2016. Uh, I had a bunch of my friends and students here, a bunch of drummers that I know from around the shop. Uh, it was an epic, epic event. So you know you're going to want to tune in. Even if you're not a drummer, you're going to want to check this out. Uh, and, and I appreciate everybody at BevCam for helping me make this possible, for, for letting me use their amazing equipment. And it's going to be uh, an epic show for sure. So uh, without further ado, uh, we'll start off the top with a drum solo. Check it out.
So, I don't know, lastly, in, in this kind of uh, topic of things, you know, dynamics fills, over bar line, ghost notes, um, and uh, leaving space. Um, I don't know, this is one, it's not really necessary, but I think it's kind of cool. I mean, if, if you play with a little bit of motion uh, in your limbs, actually. So, like there's this guy named Rich Raymond, a lot of you guys maybe have come to his clinic here. So he has this thing where he calls like Hollywood, which is he goes, he has a lot of motion in his playing, like he wants to make it look good for the camera, so he goes. I don't know, when I saw that, it was like, this was cool, because he's like, he's like summoning the, the hammer of, you know, <laughs> you know, what he's doing. Epic. I don't know, I started experimenting with that, and it's obviously not necessary, because the most important thing is the music that you're playing, right? But, I don't know, I think it, it's, it's important to give a little bit of swagger to your playing, and actually play with a lot of motion. Um, because, when I'm playing on a gig, sometimes it's like after work, I'm, I'm kind of tired and, and uh, you got to play like a three hour set and everything. There's a lot going on. Um, and one of the things that picks me up though is when I actually like. Um, and the reason I think that actually is important is because. Um, when I'm playing and people see me doing like the other musicians, they get into it more. You know, it helps. It actually helps to bring the music up. So even if you're playing like uh, like a, a small bar game, maybe you're playing like a shuffle or something. And you just want to add a little a little flavor, a little texture to it. Like that make that can make a huge impact. It gets me more into the music that I'm playing when I do those things. Like it just does. You know, because when you're on the drums, it's all about all about motion. So, if if make a video of yourself, if you see yourself, you know, it's totally cool. You know, there's a guy named Ari Honig who's a boss for his artist, and he's it's the most uncomfortable thing I've ever seen. When he plays, he's like it's like a praying mantis. I don't know, and he like he has his, he has his shoulders like he makes like this like really weird face and everything, and I just like he's got to have shoulder problems. Like I don't know how he does it, but what he plays is amazing though. You know, taking take nothing away from that, but I think like if everything that I that I play, I want it to be effortless, completely effortless. And if that's the case, I don't want to seem constricted at all. I want if I want to hit that crash cymbal out, I'm gonna hit it loud. Um, so I don't know. Practice at home, any type of even even like if you're playing uh, jazz. This is my uh, this is my technique, which is uh, when I want to play slow, you know, I have my, my grip on the stick, right? When I want to play fast, though, this is what I do. So you guys can see it. So I have my fingers pretty much doing anything. You know, my arm, not really doing much. All my students definitely know this for sure. Um, my wrist, not too much. All fingers, all fingers. So what is it? It's thumb flat against the stick curl my pointer finger around, so this is a tight grip, for sure. Uh, this right here is the fulcrum, right? I don't have any space in here. That's really important, because I want this to be a solid unit. Uh, can you guys see, can you see that back there? Cool. Um, so, I use my pointer finger, right? Nothing else is going on, though. It's all pointer finger, you know? Even if you want to see it from this way, too. So it gets too fast at some point. I can't handle it. So what I do, your fastest fingers are these ones right here. Uh, middle finger, ring finger. These are the fast twitch muscles, you know. Um, so I get these ones involved. I, uh, I have them as one unit. I curl them around the stick like this. So you guys can see the fingertips are touching. So pointer finger is still tight, right? But the fingertips are touching so that... play like that for hours. Never get tired. Never get tired. So when 
I, you know, if I want to do a fast filler on the drum set, that gives me facility. So. this kind of with one of my students um, and the idea is like you know Bruce Lee had the technique where he could he could deliver uh, I think a fatal or powerful blow like an inch from a person this is um, what I think is like my version of the one inch punch which is I just open and close and it's like a snapping motion so why is that important because sometimes when you're going on the drum set you, you know you're tired maybe you run out of energy you don't have the strength to like go all the way up here um, so, I can just use my fingers to do that. So I open, I'll do it uh, a little bit slower, so you can see what's going on. It's really the same motion, it's these fingers that are kind of closing around the stick. Uh, so here's the difference, right? You guys tell me if you hear a difference between arm and this, uh, the, the one inch punch. Was, was there a difference out there sonically? No. Nope. Not much, right? I'm still pulling the sound out of the drums. So, um, that's, you know, that's my technique. That's the way I play. So, this is the hip hop section, basically. So what it is, right? It's a flam between um, the bass drum and the hi-hat, and then the snare drum and the hi-hat, right? So, the first one, you guys saw on the first page? So, normal backbeat, right? Everything lines up. Slightly off. You guys, you guys can hear that? So it's not on. And I'm not changing the time at all. The only thing changing is the bass drum and snare are slightly before. That's really important. The hi-hat stays here. I'll, I'll demonstrate. The hi hat stays the same, right? Hi hat stays the same, um, and the bass drum and snare drum change around. So, why is that important? Um, well, it's important for me because I use it for pretty much any type of music that I play, and I'll demonstrate. Hey, hey, mama said the way you move gonna make you sweat, gonna make you groove. Same old 
dream And every stop that we made Oh, I thought about When I pulled out the shades and I really felt blue. everything for me so there we go so you know if I was doing it in time so you can hear it I'll do it with I can't even hear the click anymore but I'm assuming it's on Sounds like it's in line with the, the clip, right? All right. Uh, does that make sense? Cool. Uh, totally cool. If you want to hear it, I can play it for you right now. One-handed, Colin. <laughs> Do it! Um, I'll do it one-handed with a pad. You know, so I have to slow it down, obviously. All right. Um, is the second line, third line, which is eighth notes, triplets, next line, which is sixteenth notes, right? And fives. So this is sixes. Now I'll switch over now. Sevens. gets interesting. It's where it gets fun. Uh, fun. So, uh, I love these, and I play these all over the place. Um, so the fives, check this out. Um, this is the first example, right? So that's right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left the whole time. So the accent pattern stays the same, right? So, um, next one over, it's just a little change, right? It's right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, left, left. Well, what gets fun is if you're good at technique, when you speed these up, that's when it gets fun. So the, the fives, ready? I'm going to speed them up. exercises, um, this is important for your overall groove, regardless of what type of music. Um, and I'll show you guys why. So, I'm just going to play.
right at that corner the whole time um, but my overall groove like this is why um, whenever I play like uh, I want to make it feel good but this if you go through this page and do stuff like this uh, your groove is gonna feel a lot more relaxed because back to the space thing back to this why does this feel good this feels good because I can hear all the subdivisions within this beat Everything. In my head I can hear nines. Triple, triple, triple. Twelves.
I think the best piece of advice I could probably give you guys is um, is to take care of, of you first. Um, you're way more important than doing crazy, crazy stuff on the drums. Your health, your well-being, that's 10 times more important. You know, as Nate mentioned before, when I came into the shop, I was I was totally introverted. Um, you know, and it took me a while to kind of just find myself, you know, and, and uh, you know, I really owe it to my parents for sure, Nate as well, um, for helping me out. Um, but, you know, I think if I, you know, taking care of yourself is a really big factor for sure. Um, so I'm on for a minute. I'm gonna sound like I'm one of the hosts on uh, on Shark Tank or um, uh, what's the other show? What's um, Dragon's Den? Dragon's Den. So, um, but it's important because if you want to do this as a profession, this is the advice for you right now. Okay, um, is thinking of of everything, even small things, as an investment opportunity. You know, think about like gear as an investment opportunity. Think about. I go crazy. I think about what I eat sometimes as an investment opportunity. You know, you are you are the business. You know, you are your own business. Whatever you do in life, you know, take care of your business. Take care of you. Um, and it's obvious things like like being a good person, showing up on time, being respectful. Uh, that goes a long way. And it's hard. Like you know, we're in it's 2016. There's less opportunities out there. Um, but I can tell you from from personal experience, like there are guys who can like who have ridiculous, ridiculous shops, and they just have no, no communication skills, they can't make connections with people. And that's part of the equation for sure. If you want to find work, you want to be successful, um, make connections with people. So, um, so we all, you know, we all have goals, whatever goal you have in life, even if you don't want to be a professional drummer, you want to do it for fun, um, how, you know, how do you achieve those goals? Those goals are achieved by, um, by taking every single day, every single piece of your day as, as training and preparation towards those goals. So that's huge for me. Uh, I like to make comparisons to like who likes who likes basketball, pro basketball? Anybody? <laughs> I, know, I know you do. So um, Steph Curry, right? Best basketball player in the world. Uh, he's out at the moment. He's going to hopefully he'll be back by the end of the playoffs. But um, what does Steph Curry do when he's not when he's not playing, right? When he's not practicing when he's not in a game, he's he's working, right? He's maybe after the game he goes to an ice down session, he probably goes back and works on a shot, goes back to the gym, maybe he goes and watches film. You know, every single thing he's doing is a variable in his day. He's not, you know, I'm not saying go and practice like 20 hours a day. That's definitely not the answer. The answer is make every single, if you want to do this professionally, every single variable on a given day as, as training. You know, because really, drums, I like to think of it as, as a professional sport, you know, and you're a professional athlete. Uh, and if, if, if you want to make it, you know, in the music industry and make a big impact, I think that goes a long way for sure. You know, so, so basketball, um, your own business. Um, also, I think, you know, this is a tough one because um, I haven't made it yet. You know, I'm going to see if I can make it for sure. I want to do everything I can to try and make it. Um, but making your own YouTube channel is also really important. Any, everybody, everybody here, you can make your own YouTube channel. And why is that important? Because if you have your own YouTube channel, um, find something that you do that nobody else can do, uh, that separates you. And uh, even if you do it, even if um, you know, you're know you retired and you just want to play for fun, that's great. Still make a YouTube channel, you know? Because what you can do with it is, is uh, it gives you um, an outlet, you know? If It's hard to find gigs, right? It gives you an outlet so that if you just don't have any opportunities at the moment, you can say, well, hey, I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't do anything this weekend because I have a recording session. I'm recording a video of myself, you know? You're getting yourself, it's, it's true, you're getting yourself out there, you know? Uh, most of the time, like I'm sure, Andrew, you might agree, like, when you get asked for stuff, uh, people probably check out your YouTube stuff a lot, I would imagine, right? Yeah. It's yeah, just, sure. Yeah. yeah, it's it's part of the equation, you know, having a YouTube presence. Um, the first thing they do, they pr they might not necessarily check out your resume, or you know, even if you show up to the gig, but they'll go home and they'll check out your page, right? So everybody here can make one. You know, it's totally free, and and for students, you know, if your parents support it and everything, I think it'd be great. Uh, it's a great outlet for sure. Maybe in a couple of years. <laughs> um, 
because it, you know, it is a gig in a sense, and it, it gives you an outlet, gives you opportunities through that. You know, I've only, I think I have like six subscribers maybe to my YouTube channel. I only made it like a couple months ago, but um, even even through that, there you never know. There's people that are checking you out that want to know about what you can do. You know, so that's how you can separate yourself also. Not to um, mention, guy, you've done 1,200 of the videos on our YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, but you never see my face. So <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I wanted to thank you so much for, for tuning in, for checking me out and, and my clinic here at the Drum Shop North Shore. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you to Bev Cam for this dope camera, which I, I don't even know how to use half the stuff, but I know how to press record, which is the most important thing, right? You got to know how to press record. Um, and I also wanted to, if I can, I want to work on this at the studio, bring, a, bring up a couple links Hopefully they will appear below me or above me, which will show uh, how to contact me, how to reach out to me on my Twitter page, Instagram, Facebook. Um, and I'm working on the website thing and how you can check us out uh, as well. So that stuff's just going to appear. And um, yeah, check me out for sure. Uh, I want to connect with you guys. If you like what you saw and you want to reach out to me, uh, I, want to hear, I want to hear about you as well. Uh, especially if you're a drummer, if, if you if you want to learn how to play, this is the place to go. We do lessons here, uh, and we make it communi communal events for sure. So um, also, I'm going to take you guys on a little tour of the drum shop. So I hope you enjoy. Uh, swing by, we're on Rantoul Street here, right downtown. Uh, it's walking distance of pretty much everywhere. And if, if you're interested in drums, lessons for your kids, lessons for you, um, if, if you're just an, inspire, an inspiring musician, we have all kinds of stuff here, and we can hook you up for sure. Talk to Nate, Marissa, Sean, and Seth. They will hook you guys up. And, uh, yeah, thanks again for watching. <laughs>